gaming. It is thrown in front of just about everything for PC tech. Gaming graphics cards, gaming hard drives, gaming RAM, gaming CPU coolers. Heck, I'm pretty sure there's even gaming CPUs and definitely gaming motherboards. But what about sound cards? They're a very weird topic in PC gaming, especially in the modern era, because most of the time nobody needs them. So when I saw this from Creative, an external gaming sound card, well, I had a lot of questions, including uh, who's buying these things? What's it actually for? And why did I buy one? Today, let's find out together, because I certainly don't know going into this if this is even gonna be worth it. Hello and welcome. My name is Wolfie, you're watching Greater Than Pi, and thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And if you're a subscriber of mine, you are awesome. Like seriously, thank you so much for subscribing. So, the Sound Blaster X G6 External Gaming Sound Card. Whew, that's a, a long name. But um, actually, that's not even its real name. It's the G6 high-res gaming DAC and USB sound card with headphone bi-amp. So that's actually a lot to unpack right there alone. What this is claiming to be is both a sound processing unit, which is a sound card, a DAC, which is a digital to analog converter, and a amp, which are all parts of the audio processing chain. If you've ever spoke to somebody who's a musician or even like an EDM artist or anybody who does professional voiceover work, you're going to hear these terms thrown around a lot by them. And that's because these are actually kind of key components to the audio pipeline. So for example, the DAC, the digital to analog converter, is required to convert to any standard headphone. Now, what's fascinating about switching to Bluetooth that uh, pretty much was facilitated by Apple is they eliminated the need for DACs in most cases being digital to digital conversion and then they would just do the audio processing right on the headset. When it comes to high fidelity audio equipment though, you're still gonna be relying on a DAC to convert those ones and zeros that are coming from your source device to the analog signal that something like headphones can actually put out. Not to mention, there are things like surround sound setups and hi-fi audio setups that rely heavily on the use of the 3.5 millimeter jack or even the much larger 4.5 millimeter jacks. Now the next part of this is sound card, which means that it has some sort of audio processing built into it, which you can actually look on the back here where it does have a Dolby Digital Industry leading audio processor. Now Sound Blaster is actually known for their audio processors, so that's not that far of a stretch to say that this is actually an external sound card. And then finally, having an amp built in means that it will be able to drive higher impedance headphones or make headphones louder. Depending on the various situations, you may have a pretty poor amp built into, let's say, your computer. Now, the biggest reason to get something like this, though, is actually if the audio equipment inside your computer isn't up to snuff. There's a lot of noise inside a computer, noise that you can't hear. It's all currents moving around in there and making really high pitch frequencies. If you ever listen to your headphones that are plugged right into the front audio jack on your computer, you might be able to hear a sort of buzzing noise, a high pitched whining noise that may even fluctuate with the frequency of the processor. By removing the audio processing from the inside of the computer, you should hypothetically have a cleaner audio source. And by converting it to digital before it even gets to the computer, there should be no loss on the analog signal. All this is though hypothetical because we have yet to open the box. So let's do that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Creative has been around for a while. They actually made a lot of the sound cards that people really wanted in the early days of PC computing. They also make sound bars, headphones, and all sorts of great equipment. So to see the Sound Blaster name being still used is, well, pretty interesting. All right, boxing wise, we've got a nice padded top piece of the box, but that comes open pretty easily. And that is the entirety of our device. Now it's not particularly heavy. It actually looks more metal than it is online. So let's take a look here. We got scout mode, which I'm assuming is a cheat mode. SBX, which I believe is like a audio processing mode. Uh, there's a gain for both low and high gain. That's our headphone out and our mic. I think that's mic in. I'll have to look on the manual. 
This knob though feels pretty nice and it does have a click in. So it's a nice rotary knob with more than likely this is gonna be set for either mic volume or even just your volume volume. And this might switch it. We'll have to look in the manual. On the back, we have our connectivity, which we have a uh, line out or a line in, line out and USB. So you could use this somewhere in your surround sound setup chain by using this line out and then breaking that out into uh, more signals. Now, the intended use case for this is to set it down on your desk kind of like this and then have it facing towards you. Inside the box though, let's see, what do we got? We got a delicious snack. We've got a micro USB cable, which is going to be to connect to the PC. We have, oh wow, it came with an optical cable. That's pretty cool. Instruction manual, disposal, instructions, radio conformity certification. That's in Chinese. Is this a sticker or what is this? Welcome. Oh no. It, it's like a razor. Welcome to the cult thing. Okay. This is interesting. All right. We'll read that in a second. And then we actually have the actual setup instructions. So this was the warranty. All right. I'm going to have to get my narration voice on. Thank you for spending your hard earned cash on Sound Blaster X product. There's no S there, just as product. The team behind this product spends countless hours a day refining every minute detail to ensure our fans get to the best from us in quality and technology, and that we live up to your expectations as to what a gaming class product really is. Ooh, this is a declaration here. We don't and never have taken the word gaming lightly. Oh, 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 okay, okay, creative. You're challenging me. In almost 30 years of PC gaming, we have been there from the very beginning. And we have always pushed the envelope with innovative technology that separates us from the rest of the pack. Knowing that somebody out there is going to have a great time gaming with our <laughs> gaming with their friends and rivals. With our expertly designed gear, this is what drives us to constantly create and deliver only the best. You are part of the extreme now. You don't want to just be a somebody. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> if you'd like to take a product share experience with the community, amazon.com slash creative or creative.com slash review. You can also share your cool ideas for features you'd like to see from us and to help shape the future. Hashtag gamers for life. <laughs> That is Sound Blaster X Pro Gaming. Apparently I'm a pro gamer now, guys. Okay, so we've got everything installed now and ready to go. And we've got my Go XLR being pumped into the Sound Blaster card on a separate computer than the one that it's being powered on. It's kind of a confusing setup, but it is working. And we got the stuff installed to actually run it. So we've got a couple of different options in the menu here. So right down here, we actually have the ability to switch between headphone and speakers. So if you had the speaker stuff plugged in, there's actually a one button press changeover right there. This is the XBX profiles. These are different EQs based on the type of game or experience you're trying to, well, experience. So we'll have to give those a couple of tests. We also have an equalizer, which we can manually adjust for different types of music. Uh, or the games themselves. We're gonna use the SBX profiles for this. Uh, there's also playback, uh, 7.1 surround sound on headphones, virtual of course, direct mode, all this stuff is complicated and I'm sure somebody who is watching this video is gonna at least understand what these are. Uh, recording options. So these are actually pretty cool because there's quite a few good options here. Mic recording volume, mic boost, which is uh, adjusting your gain even higher. You've got mic monitoring, which you can turn on and off. Really good stuff. Uh, vocal clarity feature, which is currently enabled. So you're listening to that now. So let me turn that off to see if there's any bit of a difference. I think it actually is uh, hitting the microphone a little bit quieter. So this probably is a sort of mic boost. Not really entirely sure. We're going to have to listen. Uh, there is a noise reduction. If you are dealing with a mic that has a lot of noise, this one does not. Uh, acoustic echo canceling. Again, we're not really gonna have an issue with that on this mic in this setup, but 
Good to know that it's there. Smart volume. I'm assuming you turn this on. And if I get really, really quiet, it's going to, yeah, it's going to boost that. Wow. Yeah, I clipped that. It's going to boost that. So and then there are some EQ presence on the microphone itself. You can play around with those. Another really interesting thing is there's a voice morph, which this is a pretty standard feature in a lot of gaming products of this kind. But this one is particularly good from what I've tested. So with the female voice in the past, I uh, used to be able to imitate my wife's voice really, really well. It's also a little cute voice. I'm not sure how that's going to sound. Actually, I am not a deep voice. What if that makes you sound like dream? We can turn that off now. <laughs> There's scout mode, which you can turn on and off with the hotkey or the button on the side of the thing. This is supposed to allow you to hear footsteps. Uh, decoder um it's a lot of speak that i'm not entirely uh sure about but it looks like it's probably important mixers which nice that they have that lighting because it has rgb i've set it to green because green and yeah it, it's pretty basic and then there is some sort of an account that you can add i have not done so along with additional window settings and stuff which we're not really to focus on those. We're just focused on the things that are specific to this device. Okay, so we are in here in Starfield. We've got it set by default. It sounds good. I mean, it, it's really hard for a uh, product that is, for all intents and purposes, custom built for this kind of thing to sound bad. And we're, we've got good headphones on that this can drive. It's a beautiful setup. It sounds amazing. I'm less interested in the default performance as I am in the modified gaming mode performances. All right. SBX mode gaming. So this is going to turn on surround sound, crystallizer, but not necessarily change anything in the bass or anything. So I can kind of see the surround sound effect actually working pretty well. The engines are obviously behind me in this ship, and I can hear that, which is pretty cool. Surround sound of this kind is, it's existed for a very long time, but I mean, it, it's pretty good. It does feel less open uh, compared to the default settings. So maybe they're doing a little bit of extra compression to try to make it have that surround sound effect. So the, again, the surround sound sounds great here. Um, I'm going to try something. Maybe a bad idea. Bass boost. Actually, you know, it's funny. But that actually sounds good. So the, ba the bass boost isn't bad. This is my target, not yours. Thank you. I was actually able to identify where that was coming from. I gotta say. Pretty good. So I it wasn't a preset, but I was able to get it to sound better. Now the rest of our testing ended up actually yielding very similar results. By switching to the music preset, we were able to actually get really good performance out of Muse Dash, in which the vocals and the instruments really popped. And surprisingly, Genshin Impact is a game that actually has a built-in preset. And this is where sort of the magic starts to happen with this device. You see, with the presets, it's a little bit different than me manually adjusting and setting the settings. Instead, it actually appears that by having a preset, there's also a sort of EQ that also makes some magic happen. The Genshin Impact preset is actually really good, and it's very difficult to convey how it just 
elevates all of the necessary sounds, including vocals and even the music, which when I tried to run just the music preset, didn't quite sound right. I can't believe I'm gonna actually recommend this thing. This was interesting because I had thought that onboard audio had reached a point where it was more or less in parallel to something like this. I've used a device like this in the past, but now, now I'm gonna say it. I seriously recommend the Sound Blaster X. It may be a bit old, but it still works great. It has excellent sound isolation. It is amazing at driving high-end headphones. And it made me realize that there was something missing in my gaming setup. My Razer Black Sharks felt like they were in a box where there was more to hear at either end of the sides of the spectrum. There were more lows, there were more highs, and it couldn't quite get them. It was crushing everything together. And when paired with the right pair of headphones, it sounds amazing. And even better, this thing comes with gamer features like RGB, uh, voice mods. It comes with the ability to change sound profiles, three-dimensional positioning, all sorts of really cool features that if you're willing to turn on, compromising the audio quality a little bit, you can honestly get a really cool performance out of it. And its voice modulation is better than voice mod itself. So, I mean, it's got that going for it. It's also a one-time purchase that's nice and easy. So is voice mod actually. I think I bought voice mod, like it gave me an offer and I was like, oh, that's so cheap, I will buy it. Digressing a little bit. The point is, this is a really cool add-on to just about any small PC. And that's the other thing that I really want to touch on is the PC that it's plugged into is a micro ATX piece that could hypothetically fit an entire sound card in it, but it doesn't have to. And that's what makes this so cool. You can plug this into a laptop. You can plug this directly into a mini ITX PC and it would just work. And the way that I've got it set up right now on my desk, it doesn't look bad. It looks pretty clean. It adds extra functionality with a volume knob, which if it's not on your keyboard is kind of nice, mute functionality, and the ability to switch directly to a pair of speakers, which I do not currently own, but if I did, would make my life so much easier. So overall, it's a really cool product. I do really like it, and it has a lot of interesting use cases. Another one that I can actually think of off the top of my head would be a mini ITX PC plugged directly into a TV and connected to surround sound since it can do that. Yeah, there's just a lot of interesting functions that this can actually do. So I can't believe I'm going to say it, but if this sounds like a solution for you, for the things that you need, I recommend it. Point is, I like it, I'm keeping it, I'm using it every day and I bought another sound card. So I obviously like them enough that I had to get more, but that's where I'm gonna end it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you are not subscribed, consider subscribing because we have to still review those headphones or at least unbox them and talk about them. More importantly, we've got more tech stuff in the works, including the bigger internal brother of that sound card, which believe it or not is even better. But that, that's it for me today. Thank you guys again, Wolfie. Out.